Today on In Focus, the first update on the red Nikon lawsuit and word from the Red CEO on why it was dismissed. Hello and welcome to In Focus. I, of course, am your host, Bad Derek. And in the news today, something that I believe snuck under the radar of just about everyone. In a recent live stream with YouTuber Scott Backham, he had an unexpected guest, and that guest was none other than Red CEO Jared Land. Now, during the course of the interview, Jared teased a new camera, and I'll get to that later. But more importantly, he was fielding questions by chat participants in the live stream. And one of these chat participants brought up the subject of the red compressed raw pan. And surprisingly, the red CEO actually had some comments on that. Take a look. This may not be a question you can answer directly or even at all, but R three D is is R three D something that Red says no? We're only going to do Red code for Red, but we would if it we licensed it out, which seems to happen. Yeah, uh, people. I cannot. I see, I'm reading right now. Got it. People. It's so so amazing how wrong people get. All these people making YouTube videos and with this Nike and. <laughs> shocked at how wrong everybody got the Nikon thing um, but the you know people are like oh red's not red's hurting the industry because they're not licensing their their technology we license it to everybody and anybody that wants to and you would you everybody would be shocked at the amount of companies that we do including the big camera companies you know there's a few very few that don't. This is just, and this is just so normal. We pay license fees to use, you know, IP from other companies, other camera companies. Um, you know, we pay license fees to universities for sensor stuff. You know, that's just the way it works. When you, when you throw a lot of money into developing something, you, you have to get it back or nobody would do it. Nobody would make any technology if they didn't have the opportunity to um, recoup that investment and you know that sure it, it that gets advantage of and you know we're not a patent trolls because patent trolls are a very different definition they don't use the patents they just go and you know squeeze everybody else but Correct. we're very you know we're very friendly with all of these companies People thought, you know, the same about Apple and the same about Sony and the same about da 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 da. Fill in the blank that we're, you know, fighting and just these lawsuits back and forth. That's just all normal part of, you know, the patent process. So, you know, we're we're very happy, um, you know, to to license to anybody that wants to. You know, if people steal it and they would, you know, just like you guys, all of you creators, if you made something and you made a show or you took some images or made a film and somebody took it and was selling it and making a profit off of it, um, I'm sure you guys would have the same, you know, opinion. You'd have to protect your, protect your, your creation. So what do you make of that? In my opinion, it seems to be that Jared Land, CEO of Red, is now in a public forum stating that Red is on good terms with these camera manufacturers and that the idea of bringing lawsuit is just part of the patent negotiation process. So what does this mean? It means, and it sounds like, Red and Nikon agreed to drop the lawsuits but given themselves the option to bring it again because they've actually struck a licensing deal. Red seems happy. Nikon seems happy. And indeed, we are seeing the Z9 continue on with internal compressed raw. So what does this mean for other camera manufacturers? I believe, given Jared's statement about willingness to license to anyone, I believe this means that we are fast approaching a time where you might see internal compressed RAW in mirrorless bodies like this Fujifilm X-H2S. Maybe it will come at a fee. 
Maybe most people will be able to buy a camera like this and not pay the licensing fee, much like what DJI did with the Ronin 4D. But for a fee, and I'm hoping it's reasonable, I'm hoping we're not looking at $1,300 for a license fee on a $2,400 camera. That would be crazy, Jared. So let's not go there. You just won't sell them. You just, no one will buy it. So if we can price that at about $250, $250 to get internal compressed RAW on your Fujifilm X-H2S, $250 to get internal compressed RAW on your Sony FX3. I didn't say A7S3 because Sony has abandoned that camera. I don't know why. I sold mine. I knew you were going to do that, Sony, so I got rid of it. The moment I saw that FX3, I said, you are going to screw over all the A7S3 owners, aren't you? And you did. So you may see internal compressed RAW now on Sony bodies, maybe Sony Alpha series, maybe cameras like the, the A1 Mark II, because we know it's not going to be on the A1. So how would you feel about being able to pay a small fee and have internal compressed RAW on your Panasonic cameras or on your Fujifilm cameras or on any camera for that matter that shoots video if that was an option to have internal compressed RAW? Wouldn't that be great? And if you don't want it, don't buy the license, but at least give us the option to buy the license if we want. I think that this really does signal a new day, a dawning of a new day in the camera industry. I mean, Red will make a boatload of money if they're making 250, if, if a quarter of the people buy it. And it's a quarter of the people that buy higher end Sonys. And they have a quarter of the people that buy higher end Panasonics and higher end Fuji films. Red will be making a boatload of money. No reason for them not to do it. And who benefits? Everyone that wants internal compressed RAW on their mirrorless camera. Now, and I don't even think Red has to worry because as good as this camera is, and it's quite good, but I don't think it's ever gonna replace my Reds. It won't, it simply won't. So there's no worry there. They're not cannibalizing their own market by doing this, but at the same time, what they are doing is they're, they're spreading good goodwill. People will feel nice about that, that they now have the option, and they're gonna make a boatload, an absolute boatload of money so that they can put their money into research and development and whatever, whatever else. I think it's a win-win. So post your comments below. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. I told you that there's a new camera, and that new camera was also shown in a live stream. Take a look here. The little, yeah. that thing. It will be priced a little more than Komodo, but it won't be nosebleed level. The CEO seemed quite adamant it will have, it will have definitely a global shutter. It will be 6K. It will do 60P, and it will have way better audio. We don't know all the details, but you can be certain it's going to be an intriguing camera, and I'm hoping they have even better dynamic range I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see what's coming up. And not to mention, there was in an earlier live stream, he also mentioned that there will be a Komodo Mark II. So a Komodo Mark II and a Komodo X. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to go ahead, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you next time.